This is quiz four for MA303. This was given in the summer of 2019 uh, by Dr. Chen. We have question one, find the Fourier series of the square wave function defined here. So always, always, always with every Fourier series question that you do from here on out, you need to graph it out. Um, it's uh, like the best thing that you can possibly do for your, your performance on these Fourier series questions. Okay. So here is our function here. Um, this is t is equal to pi. That's not a pi. t is equal to pi. t is equal to negative pi. And y is equal to 1. Uh, y is equal to, or f of t is equal to 1. f of t is equal to negative 1. So there's our function there. And what's special about this function is that it, it is an odd function. Uh, and that means that if you take uh, the part that is, the part that is uh, above t is equal to zero and you reflect it around the y-axis and then around the x-axis it will sit exactly on top of it the other half of the period uh, right there. Uh, the other option would be this being an even function. Uh, let's say that we had, I'll just draw another example, let's say that we had some absolute uh, value kind of thing going on over here and another absolute value over here. Uh, if you can reflect one side uh, just over the y-axis and get it to sit on top of its other half, then that is an even function. And the cool thing is, uh, odd functions are always sine series. All of the a n uh, coefficients will all go to zero if you're dealing with an odd function. And uh, likewise for even series, it will always be a cosine series, and the b n component will always go to zero. So what this means is that our lives are a little bit easier because uh, instead of using our normal formula, and I'll, I'll write this out, the sum from n is equal to one to infinity, this is an approximation of f of t. Uh, instead of this being, oh, whoops, a zero over two plus the sum from n is equal to one to infinity of a n cosine n pi t over l plus b n sine n pi t over l uh, with a n is equal to 1 over l integral from negative l to l uh, f of t cosine n pi t over l dt and b n is equal to 1 over l integral from negative l to l f of t sine of n pi t over l <clears throat> dt. Instead of having to deal with all of this, our life gets a lot simpler. Uh, instead, f of t, since this is a sine series, is just approximately the sum from n is equal to 1 to infinity of bn sine n pi t over l. And I might as well uh, tell you what l is. l is just the half period up here. So since the period of our entire function is 2 pi, our period is just pi. Uh, so this l will cancel out that pi and we'll just have nt in there and our bn we can write as 2 over l integral from 0 to l f of t sine of n pi t over l dt but since our l is equal to pi this just becomes nt in here and uh, we have 2 over pi integral from 0 to pi so let's uh, let's just compute this let's find our bn and uh, kind of get out of here um, so, what is f of t on this interval from 0 to pi? Well, they tell us uh, right up here, f of t is equal to negative 1 from 0 to pi. So, we can rewrite this as negative 2 over pi integral from 0 to pi of sine nt dt. The integral of sine nt dt will be negative 1, uh, yeah, negative, negative 1 over n cosine of nt, and this is negative 2 over pi outside there, and we're evaluating this from 0 to pi. Plugging in pi, we get negative 1 over n cosine of pi n, or n pi, and the cosine of n pi, if we plug in n is equal to 0, we're sorry, we, we don't deal with 0, but n is equal to 1, uh, what are we going to get? Uh, that's just going to give us uh, the cosine of pi, which is negative 1. Uh, if we plug in n is equal to 2, we will get 
uh, sorry, zero, uh, so, sorry, one. It'll keep flopping between negative one and one, and we can write this as minus one over n times negative one to the nth power. And then plugging in zero down here, we'll just get negative one over n. So overall, we have negative two over pi, negative two, uh, negative two over pi times negative one over n times negative one to the n plus one over n. So uh, factoring things out, flipping this thing around a little bit, this is equivalent to negative two over n pi, one minus negative one to the nth power. And let's compactify this a little bit more because we can, we can, we can do that. If n is equal to one or any odd integer, we know that this little guy will evaluate to uh, negative one and one minus negative one, this whole thing will be equal to two. So this thing is two, that's an n, two if n odd. But what if n even? Well, if n even, then this will be uh, positive one here and one minus positive one, that will be zero. So zero if n even. And what this means is that we can write a n, or sorry, this is b n. I got that right up here, right? Okay, good. b n is just, uh, let's see, negative four over n pi for n odd. And I hope you see where that's coming from. Uh, if n is even, we get zero. If n is odd, we'll just multiply this thing by two. Okay, so four over n pi, negative four over n pi, that's great. Uh, since we know that our full equation is just bn times sine of nt under that sum, we can say that f of t is approximately the sum from n is equal to one to infinity of negative four over n pi, but I gotta be careful here because it's not the sum from n is equal to one to infinity, it's n odd to infinity. So all of the odd integers from one to infinity, sine nt, and sometimes you'll see this rewritten uh, with the constant pulled out, so minus four over pi integral, sorry, that's the, that's the sum from n odd to infinity of sine nt over n. And if we go take a look at our answer key, we will see uh, yep, exactly, exactly that. So that's great. Moving on to question number two. Let's copy this guy over. Whoops, I think I missed part of it. Question two, let's show that the following system is almost linear with zero, zero as a critical point. So we're actually gonna work backwards a little bit here. Uh, we're gonna show that it's linear at the very end and we're gonna uh, linearize it ahead of time. So let's prove that zero, zero is a critical point. Well, any critical point must satisfy dx dt and dy dt equals zero. So zero is equal to one minus e to the x plus two y, and zero is equal to negative x minus four sine y. Plug in zero, zero here, we get zero is equal to one minus one plus zero, which is true, and zero is equal to zero minus four uh, y of zero will just be zero. So yeah, this works. Uh, that is that is a critical point there. And then in order to prove that the system is linear, we'll have to, uh, sorry, is almost linear, we'll have to fully linearize it with our Jacobian matrix. Our Jacobian, it's just fx, fy, gx, gy, if this guy is f and this guy is, I keep doing that, f and g there. So the Jacobian of x, y will be uh, what? The partial derivative with respect to x is negative e to the x. Partial y will be two, that's for f. And then uh, for g over here, we get negative one and minus four cosine of y uh, right there. So really weird process coming up. One that I did not remember, but had to look at the answer key for. Sorry about that. Um, so to prove that this thing, to prove that this thing is 
uh, almost linear, what we have to do is this kind of thing. We'll have a function r, r of x and y, and a function s of x and y, and we will set these guys equal to f of x and y and g of x and y, and then we'll subtract from this vector function the Jacobian evaluated at 0, 0 times x and y. Hehe, <laughs> super weird. Uh, I'm not sure <laughs> I'm not sure where this works. Um, and we're not even done yet because what we have to do is take the limit as x and y both approach 0 of r of x, y over the square root of x squared plus y squared, and that has to be equal to the limit as x and y approach 0 of s of x and y over the square root of x squared plus y squared, and all of that has to be equal to 0. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm not sure what's <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, but let's just figure out what these are. So the Jacobian at zero zero. So uh, here the Jacobian at zero zero will be negative one, two, negative one, negative four. So we can plug that in and multiply it by x y and get negative x plus two y minus x minus four y. And uh, let's replace this, this uh, f of x, y, and g of x, y here. f of x, y is just going to be 1 minus e to the x. Oh, no, someone's calling me. I have no idea who that is. I'm going to hang up on them. Um, okay, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm getting really distracted. And then we'll replace our g of x, y with uh, this guy right here, which just comes from here. So minus x minus 4 sine y and okay uh, what is what is this well r of x y will be 1 minus e to the x plus x and then 2y minus 2y will just give us 0 and then what about our second uh, our second component down here we will get negative x plus x, so that's 0, minus 4 sine y will stick around, and then we're adding 4y. Okay, <laughs> okay, so we have our r and our s functions. We can replace them down here. 1 minus e to the x plus x, and minus 4 sine y plus 4y. Uh, God, I haven't taken a limit in a in a very in a very long time. Um, okay, well, <laughs> apparently these limits are zero. Um, let's see. Yeah, um, <laughs> this is really weird. I don't remember them talking about this in lecture, but this is I'll, I'll show you. Okay. We're, we're gonna look we're gonna do this together even though we've already been doing this together okay just take a look at the answer key so uh, what what they're saying is uh, so we're finding the um, we're finding the remainder terms of the system by computing R of X y is equal to uh, X prime y prime that's just our, our uh, you know our F and G up here minus the Jacobian at 0 0 times X and y that's exactly what we were doing they got uh, exactly what we got and they just said that these limits <laughs> that these limits are zero and and uh, one one can check this so I guess if you remember your limits you can go off and do this but really this this isn't something that they ask about on finals and they ha they okay I say they but this was just Dr. Chen last summer but I don't see them asking about this on an exam maybe you remember how to do this process but also I don't know, it might be better to find a different definition for an almost linear system. And in fact, and really we're just sticking around here at the end for fun, um, you, you can get out of here, that you're probably not going to get anything out of this. Let's just Google almost linear system and see if there's some nicer definition that we can use 
uh, to figure figure this out. Okay, this is really dumb, but I did find a definition, and it's pretty circular. So an almost linear system is a system that can be linearized such that the critical points of the linearization of the system uh, are uh, have the same behavior as the the same critical points of the almost linear system. I really hate that definition, but uh, I don't think we have to worry about it too much. All of the systems that you are asked about, all the systems you are asked to linearize uh, are linear, uh, sorry, are almost linear. And so that linearization actually does make sense. Um, okay, so that's a definition to keep in your head, but uh, yeah, I don't really like the end of this last question here.